Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the new Yule V9 model. We're going to see how we can do instant segmentation with this new model. It does also support that now. So previously, I also have a video where we go in and train a custom Yule V9 model. This is the new version that was just released in the Yolo family. So we have Yule V8, like Yule V5, all the different variations and versions of Yolo. But now we have Yule V9 as well, and it supports instant segmentation. So it's pretty cool. We're going to run through a bunch of videos, but we're also going to see how we can run it on a live webcam. In one of the upcoming videos, we're definitely going to train a custom v 9 model for instant segmentation. So definitely stay tuned for that. So let's just jump straight into the YOLO v9 GitHub repository and let's scroll down and see the act like instant segmentation models, which has just been released. So this wrapper here for YOLO v9 already has 7.4k stars. Let's just scroll a bit down here. We can see comparisons. Again, I have a video where we go over all of this, like how we can run the model and also how we can train a custom YOLO v9 model on a custom data set where you annotate it with RoboFlow. We create the whole computer vision training pipeline. So definitely check that video out. Here we see some comparisons. So again, they state that it is state of the art and is also like significantly faster compared to some of the other models. And if you're just taking a look at it, we both have the YOLO v9 and also the GitLand model. So those are both the new models which are coming out. So we can see if we compare it with YOLO v8 here, which is the purple one or like the light purple, we get significantly better performance and also faster like inference speed or like at least a lower number of parameters. So I'm really excited to test this out here. And now we can do more comparisons like side by side with YOLO v8 and also YOLO v9. Initially, I think that YOLO v8 is still a bit better compared to YOLO v9. And again, it really depends on your data set. So definitely test out both models. But again, let's see how it does with instant segmentation. Now for up detection, I still think that YOLO v8 is slightly better and it was also like significantly faster when I was running it, but it was with no optimizations. Here we can see the performance again. We have the different variations. We have like tiny, small, medium, and then we have the C and E model for the GLAN versions. So this is pretty cool. And we have the average position on the validation set, the number of parameters and the floating point operations per second. So yeah, you can directly go in and take the models here. We can also use the Autolytics framework. Everything is built into that already. So you can extract it just as we were doing with a YOLO v8 model. So if we just go a bit further down here, we can see some training and so on. I already have a Google Colab notebook covering that. Here we see how we can run inference with the detect.py script. But again, everything is still and already integrated into um, Ultralytics. So right now we can see the panoptic segmentation here. That is also an option we're going to take a look at in one of the upcoming videos. So that is also pretty cool where we basically segment out like every single pixel in the whole image where for the instant segmentation, which we're going to take a look at in this video, I'm just going to zoom in here a bit, but we're going to take a look at the instant segmentation in this video where you're going to be able to actually just extract all the individual objects that you want to segment out. So if you just scroll a bit further down, we can see that we have object detection with Galan C detection dot pi pt. We have update detection. This is how we can run the training script. We can see the different variations, Galan and also YOLO v9. Now we also have instant segmentation. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we also have panoptic segmentation where we just segment out every single pixel. So if you're using like panoptic segmentation, if you combine that with a depth map, you actually like get really good 3D understanding of your whole environment. So I'm definitely going to put out some videos about that. So we can actually go in and build like a voxel grid of our whole environment. So let's say that we know every single pixel, we know the depth value, but we also know what class or like what is that pixel that we're actually like taking a look at for the whole camera. And if you don't have multiple cameras, you can stitch together, you can even like create point clouds and so on. Um, so we get this voxel grid. So you can do a bunch of cool things in computer vision space with panoptic segmentation. And if you're looking at like Tesla, all the humanoid robots and so on, like they're basically like navigating around on a panoptic um, segmentation map and then also depth values. So we have panoptic segmentation. You can also do image capturing, but we're not going to take a look at that for now. The most important thing is panoptic segmentation and also instant segmentation. So this is how you can train a custom model. Again, you can go in, fine tune these models here on your own data set. I'm going to show you how you can create that whole pipeline with RoboFlow, how you can extract the data set in there and so on. But we can also jump into the Autolytics documentation. They also have the YOLO v9 model integrated directly. We can get a short overview over it. Like you can read through um, the overview and you can also get like an introduction to it. You can also see the, the core innovations and so on. If you want to read more details about like what architectural changes has been made and also compared to YOLO v8. So if it's go a bit further down, we'll be able to see like the performance again. It's the exact same thing, but we're going to get a code snippet in just a second right here. So we have user examples. We can both use like predict, train val validation, and also export. 
as we used to with all the other YOLO models that we have in here and especially with YOLO V8 from Ultralytics. So these are the supported modes and also tasks right now we can do object detection and instant segmentation directly with Ultralytics. So they don't have the panoptic segmentation yet. I'm not sure if that's going to be added, but we're definitely going to cover that in another video. So hit the subscribe button under the video here as well. And also the bell notification because we're definitely going to do that. It's so cool that we can segment out every single pixel. So that's pretty much it. We can just take this code snippet here throw it into our own custom Python script. We're going to run through a couple of videos, but also test it out on a live webcam. So we're just jumping straight into the Python script. I've just copy pasted the code snippet. Again, it's really just set up with Ultralytics. The only thing that we have to do is from Ultralytics import YOLO, and then we can set up our model, create an instance of it. Right now we need to specify YOLO v9 C dash sec the PT, and then it's going to automatically download the model file to your computer if it's you're running it for the first time. After that, it's basically just going to load in that model, create an instance of it. We can get the information about our model, and then we can go and use the predict function from Ultralytics. We can then throw in the different sources that we have. Could either be like an image that we just extract from our web camera, if we're using, using it in our own custom applications or Python script. But we can also directly throw in a full video. It could be a NumPy array, PLL image, could even be like a webcam, so like the index to your webcam. We have a bunch of different arguments that we can set to the predict function as well. Right now, we're just going to show the results and also save it. But we can also go in and set the confidence score directly if you want to use that as well. We can also return the results here if you want to extract the results and so on. And there's a bunch of videos on the Ultralytics documentation, but I also have it on my own channel, like how you can set up a custom class, extract the results, use them in your own application and project. So how can you extract the bounding boxes, the classes, the co uh, confidence scores, and pretty much like everything within this results class that is going to return. So this is a generator. It'll just keep returning the results when we're doing predictions. So yeah, we pretty much just have everything right now and we can either like print the results, but right now we're just going to vi visualize the results, see how this model perform. We can just swap this out here as well with YOLO V8. And this is how we can swap between YOLO V8 and YOLO V9 model with Ultralytics. So again, we're also going to do some custom scripts where I'm going to show you like all of that, like how you can extract everything. So stay tuned for that as well. But right now, let's just go down and run the Python script. I have a video that I'm going to show you. So this is just like some suitcases running at this uh, belt here at an airport. So this is the video that we're going to pass through it. Let's see if we're able to segment out these different suitcases running at this conveyor belt. Then after that, we're going to test it on a live webcam and do some comparisons with YOLV8 directly. And I think that's pretty, pretty cool. So let's just run it directly here. So YOLV9 segmentation, we're going to use the YOLV9C model and it's going to automatically download it if you haven't run it before. So right now I'm just going to drag the window over. We can now see that we're taking the suitcases, fairly high confidence score. We can see that we act like missed them here at the end. So now right now we get the person up here these are the pre-trained models, so it will just detect the classes from the Cochrane data set. We have 80 classes, could be like person, suitcase, car, truck, and all those different like standard classes. Right now we can see that it runs around 250 milliseconds inference. I'm running this on a MacBook um, M2 chip. So this is running on the CPU right now. It will be significantly faster if you're running it on the GPU, but having around like four frames per second is not too bad on CPU. So now we can see you act like detect a backpack here. We don't really get any false predictions. And even though we have some very small objects at the end, it is still able to detect the suitcases. We have the backpack. Let's just let it run for some more time. Here we detected a car, but again, it has a very low confidence score. It had around like 27%. Uh, so we can definitely like fill that out relatively easy by just having a threshold value. You can see that it detects a car again here. So we get some false predictions here and there. Just hit Q here or escape on a keyboard and should be able to terminate it. We can then test out the YOLO V8 model directly and then we're going to run it on a webcam. So right now, the only thing that we need to swap out is basically just the path to the model. If you're running it for the first time, it will automatically download it. So here for YOLO V8, we also need to specify if we want to use the medium, small, nano, all, all these different variations. Right now, I think it is around like the medium model that is comparable to the YOLO V8 9 model, which we have available uh, for Ultralytics. So right now we can see here that it starts to download the model. So it's around 52.54 uh, megabytes. It's going to do everything for you with just a couple of lines of code. You're now able to do inference with a bunch of different models. They also have other variations in there. Right now we can see that we get around like 160, 150, uh, 150 milliseconds inference time. So it's significantly faster compared to the Yolo V9 model. It is 
not exactly like twice as fast, but it is pretty damn close to. And again, this was also like kind of like my experience when I was running it for optic detection. So the Yule V8 models is still like faster when we're just using the raw PyTorch models. So it could be faster if you're converting it to ONNX, Tensor RT, and like the optimized framework, but I haven't tested that out yet. I'm definitely planning to play around with that in the future. So again, we get pretty good results. Like we get the handbag, we get the backpack, also the suitcases here in the end. We also get the pers person here and there. So again, the predictions look fairly nice and I also think that we get some false predictions here in the in the front with the car as well I'm not sure if it was the car class but we got some we got some false predictions we were basically just covering all of it we can even like see these black flaps it, sometimes it is detected as a suitcase so that is definitely like an error it's now going to test it on a live webcam we can just go in here and change the index so right now we can just specify like a zero I just need to make sure that this is act like my webcam so I have two cameras connected to it right now so it might not be able to boot it up there we go. We can actually see that I'll just pull it over. So this is the webcam that I have. So this is the webcam in front of me right now. We're detecting a chair. Um, we also got a bicycle here, which is actually like the microphone or like a motorcycle. This is this is not really close to, to being that. But yeah, again, we can see now I can really nice mask around me here as a person. Remember, this is the Joel V8 model. Still around the same inference time. I can turn around here. You can see my phone. We have a mouse, keyboard, mouse, person. We get some pretty nice detections around um, here we got a TV, but again, the mask is very nice around it. You can even see it over here to the left on the recording tool. It takes me as a person with a fairly nice um, segmentation mask. So we'll just terminate this one here and try it out on the YOLO, um, YOLO V9 model. There we go. We're just going to go back and again, we specify the serif index. So this is the webcam. You can pass in any source here, like a NumPy array, PLL image video file, image file. You can even like just throw in a YouTube video. You can just throw in a link to the YouTube video or yeah, like a URL. And it's also going to run predictions on that. Right now it's going to open up the webcam. There we go. So again, it's not as fast, but the, the segmentation mask around it is very, very nice. I can just try to like put it around here. Let's say if we got the, we get the bicycle again. So we're not getting the bicycle in this example here. We, we don't really get, oh, we got one here. So it's a mo motorcycle, but again, it's really, really low confidence score, probably around like 0.50 here. It's like not too low, but sometimes it is in the lower end. But the chair here is not really detecting the chair in the background right now, but uh, let me try to take it up a bit further. Yeah, so it's not detecting the chair here in the background as it did with the Yol V8 model. So yeah, I, I probably still think that the Yol V8 model is, is a bit better on, on this part as well. Um, let's try to put it around. We get the keyboard mouse, person, the mouse and so on is fairly good. Also the person over here, the laptop. So right now it actually like the text is as a laptop, but right before it was the taking as as the TV. We also get the TV here. So I think it really depends on the use case and the, the project that you're working on. So definitely test out both models on your data set if you have multiple different videos. It feels like you kind of get the same accuracy, but the inference speed is faster for the Yule V8 model. So definitely test that out. But again, you can optimize the models even further, export them into different formats. You can do that directly with Autolytic as well. So I think this is a good video just showing like how you can use the Yule V9 model for instant segmentation before it was only possible with optic detection and even like the panoptic segmentation. We're definitely going to take a look at that from the custom code from the Yule V9 GitHub repository. So stay tuned for that. Check out the video with how you can actually use and fine tune a custom Yule V9 model. So I think it's pretty cool that we have multiple models now that we can test out on your own applications and projects. Before this Yule V9 model was released, I actually think that Yule V8 was significantly better both on performance wise, but also on inference speed compared to any other models out there. But again, Yule V9 is still building on top of Yule V8 and so on. So there's still a lot of similarities but we get some differences, test it out on your own data set. I have videos about all of it and we're definitely going to cover it way more in the future. This was to get like a high level overview, how you can run it, use it with Autolytics. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy detecting.